praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Katakir robo shaitan de le bekista tavlepan. Hallelujah. You know, it is going to be long people going to start warming up to the idea of having tongues and interpretation of tongues back in the church. It's going to be long. There's going to be more than just a couple of preachers who know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It ain't going to be long. I'll tell you right now. God's people are going to take a hold of everything the Father's made available to them and going to start moving in signs and wonders and miracles and demonstration of the power of God. You know, this just kind of a, just a, just a brief just a brief review of the things I talked about this morning before I move on. You know, I talked about success, how you can be successful. And, you know, and people just ears pop up, you know, po you know, you know, perk up or rather, you know, when you talk about success. I, we, well, Father has given us a recipe for success in every dimension of our life. A lot of people just focused on having success financially and materially. Well, God will give you that too, but it, it's got to be Him giving it to you rather than you running after it and trying to say that you want, you know, Somehow your relationship's built around that. Your relationship can't be around that because you can't serve God mammon. Do you understand that? Because yeah. at every crossroad, when Father's trying to get you to a place of surrender to Him, get you to a place of letting go of your stuff so you can have His stuff, you're going to choose mammon every time. You're going to choose, you know, taking care of yourself, taking thought of yourself, what you're going to wear, what you're going to, you know, eat, you know, where, you know, where you're going to sleep and... You know, people are just stuck in that realm and they go, well, look, how do I ever get out of that realm? I mean, I'm just so inundated with it. I've been so conditioned to just do nothing but be responsible within a human framework. The Lord says, no, just forget about it. He says, to, you, he says uh, to us, he said, I want to show you success. Let me show you the model, Abraham. Abraham, come go with me. I'm going to show you a place we're not going to, uh, we're, you're going to go to, but I'm not going to tell you till we get there. I'm going to show you a place that we're going to go, but I'm not going to tell you till we get there. He's 75 years old. You know what? He's going he's, he's gonna to pack up everything that, he's gone, that he has and he's going gonna to follow the Lord. And it isn't going to take long. And he, yeah, he's going to go through some challenging situations. He's going to go through some things that are going to make it look like what? This is, the, this is the blessing of the Lord. But he just, he's faithful to God. And by Genesis chapter 13, God has made him wealthy. Now, it's, this is the wealth that God gives to establish his covenant. It's a wealth that comes miraculously. It's not a wealth that we, by our own arm of flesh, produce. Because then we're chasing the wrong thing. I hear people all the time talking about how they're going to make wealth for the kingdom. You're not making wealth for the kingdom. Give me a break. God's already made it all. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's, he's made all the wealth. He's done. He's finished with that program. And he's wanting, looking for somebody he can entrust it to. And so he says, don't, look, don't go after these things. This is very, very difficult for us to grab a hold of it. But the reality of it is the Lord makes it so simple for us to agree with what's right and, and to totally refuse what's wrong. He says in Psalms chapter 1, he gives us the recipe for success. I'm, you know, for me, the most important thing is spiritual success. You know, the Lord wants your soul to prosper. People misunderstand soul prosperity. They misunderstand the soul. And they think, well, the soul is this and that and the other thing. No, no, no. The, the Hebrew word nephesh for soul and the Greek word suke for soul, it means your whole of your life, the whole of your existence, the whole of your being. That's what soul means. It's the whole of your being. Hallelujah. And you're far, and praise God, we're far more than a face that's going to get wrinkled up. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? We're far more than hair that's going to get gray. And in some people's cases, it's falling out and, you know, you're exercising your faith going, oh, Lord, Jesus, please. <laughs> you know, help me, Lord. But at any rate, you know, Papa has given to us the ability to prosper and to be in health, even as our soul prospers. He's given us this wonderful realm of success, and he tells us what we got to do. And it's a little bit challenging because all the forces of hell and all the ways of men and all the things that you've been conditioned to agree with is imposing something opposite on you. Psalms chapter 1 makes it real simple. You know, the Lord just simply says, don't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. People listening to the counsel of the ungodly, right, left, and center. I mean, people talk about, oh, I don't want, I'm scared. We, we might go over there. might be a false prophet. Well, then how about the fact that you false prophet to yourself all the time? You, in other words, you're declaring stuff to yourself that is not the word of God. It's not in the Bible. It's everything opposed to what Father said you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to what you're supposed to be. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Not your ungodly counselor or anybody else's ungodly counsel. This is a recipe of success. I'm going to tell you right now, everything that God has promised us, all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm is ours. We don't realize it because many times we're simply disobeying the laws of God. We're defying the spiritual laws of life and, and expecting to reap the benefits of God's abundant goodness that he has extended towards us. He's saying, listen, you got to let go of what you got so I can give you what I have. 
Hallelujah. You can't hold on to what you got and have what I have. I'm not, you can't mix up the thing. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to mix this up for you. I'm not going to let you get spoiled with traditions and philosophies and worldly interests and earthly concerns and at the same time think that somehow you're doing what I want you to do. I have separated you unto myself, says the Lord. I have brought you over into a heavenly realm to show forth my glory, to show forth my person, my presence, my ways, my statutes, my precepts, my insights. I want to give them to you. He says to us, don't stand in the way of sinners. God's people stand in the way of sinners all the time. Standing there watching the same day watch things that the world is watching. So listening to the same things that the world is listening to. Enjoying laughing at the same jokes the world's laughing at. Being interested and captivated to run after the same, you know, prizes that the world is running after. Standing in the way of sinners. It's just not, it's just not, I'm going to tell you right now, it will ruin you. It will mess all the success up. God as Father has called us into a success that defies our imagination. It is a miraculous inheritance where we get to walk around as the heirs of God, moving in supernatural faith, that whatever we ask Father, he's going to do it. It's true. It's just true. Because this is what he says. This is his word. He tells us, to, to not sit in the seat of the scornful. It goes on all the time. People are defying the laws of success and wondering why they're not blessed. You're cursing yourself. You're supposed to be a blessing, everybody, so that you may inherit a blessing. I tell people, you know, go to Home Depot, get yourself some Gorilla Tape, wrap around your head, you know, maybe even go ahead and take a little, you get somebody to take a little slice off the upper lip, a little slice off the lower lip, and get someone to suitor the thing up, and then take the suitors out after a period of time, and you just got to close down, right? But you know what? It's just, it isn't going to be from the heart. And Father wants it to be from the heart because your mouth is getting you in trouble all the time. What happens if you start living by the word and speaking the word? You know, and this is really what Father is telling us over and over again from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. He's telling us to live by the word. He's telling us to meditate on the word day and night so that we can be successful. Because that's the means by which we're not going to get ourselves over into the place of walking after the counsel of the ungodly because I'm over here walking after the counsel of the word of God. Are you listening to me? Come on, man, living by the word. I know you're challenged with this. I know, as soon as you feel a little threatened, offended, you start, you know, boy, you just start talking. You're sitting in the seat of the scornful. People, people are talking bad about others because they're just so insecure. Their life's constantly on the bubble. They're constantly having to prove themselves over and over again to themselves. Will you get off that thing, man? That's the hell wagon. You know what I'm saying? Get off that. Get over here into a heavenly realm. Get out of the offense. Get out of the insecurity. Get out of the fear. Father wants to fill you with boldness and confidence. He said, you meditate on my word. I mean, because you look at Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, in, uh, especially 1 through 3, and then go compare that to um, Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, and you've got the recipe for success. It's the beginning parts of success. Just doing those things, you're going to be successful. And when people in the world begin to understand some of the basic demeanor and behavior that is wrapped up in that success, they become successful with it even though they don't know God. This is true. But what happens when all of a sudden we know God? I don't believe, I haven't found, I don't believe that there is anybody who's willing to walk with God like Abraham was willing to walk with God and trust him on a level where God could give them as much wealth as he gave Abraham. I would imagine that Abraham was one of the top ten wealthy people in the world. God gave him enough wealth to be a king. He did. He was probably compared in wealth. I'm going to imagine when God makes you wealthy, he does a good job of it. And God made him, Scripture says, gloriously wealthy. Read it, Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. Why did, what, what is the dynamics of that? The dynamics of that is risking everything, abandoning everything, saying I'm not going to concern myself with what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to eat, where I'm going to live. I'm going to leave the place where my home, uh, a bur my my my. my my native home is, my home place of birth and all of my provision and all of my protection. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to follow God in a way that I don't even know what it's all about. But I'm going to throw all of my trust into him because I've discovered that he, that he loves me and he wants to do something with my life. And he's amazing. And so I'm going to go all the way with him. See, a, relationship's, a relationship with God brings you into something that moves you past all of the rules and regulations and the word of God becomes spirit and life. And all of a sudden, you begin to understand, wait a minute, I got heavenly bread. I got the true manna. I'm getting to eat the riches of the word through the living word, Christ Jesus, every day. 
Oh, come on, people. I'm talking to you about success. I'm laying a foundation because I want to take you another, I want to take you to another level here in just a few minutes. The Lord says, meditate upon my word day and night. He's talking to Joshua. He said, then you will make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. I mean, come on, if people would just listen, Father over and over again puts it before us to, to obey him and live or the consequence of disobedience is just not, it's nothing more than the realms of death and destruction. Father invites us to come and fellowship with him in a place where he's made available to us everything that he has. But if you refuse it, it's a void that Satan feels. Listen to me. It's a void that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life feels. It's a void that fear feels. It's a void that insecurity and discouragement and condemnation and shame and all these other things that is a terrible way of life. I mean, Father has given to us the privilege, if we're willing, to be mentored by the Word. And that's really where it was at when you looked at the Old Testament. They were mentored by the Word of God. I mean, look at, I, you know, all we can imagine about Enoch, he didn't have any dimension of what we have. It was probably living in a, under an, unre, in a, an environment, in a culture of unrestrained iniquity. Think about it. In 1,565 years, in 1,565 years, the devil and the demonic influence, it was so unrestrained that Satan was so, had so corrupted men that God said in Genesis chapter 6, I repent that I made them. In 1,565 years. It's been over 4,320 years to date since those events. And we haven't gotten to the iniquity that they were in because obviously the Lord puts restraints on the demonic realm. One day in the future, those restraints are going to be completely lifted off and it's going to get real ugly. It's going to get so bad, it's unima unimaginable. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, but it's a certainty. Most important thing is Enoch was walking in the most, you know, opposing situation that you and I could imagine. He was walking with the most, you know, the greatest influence, if you would, of iniquity. And he didn't have all we got. He didn't have a Bible. He didn't have the dictionary of God to define his life, so to speak. He didn't have what we have on the level that I'm going to talk to you tonight about in terms of the ministry of the Holy Ghost who manifests the Word, who makes the living Word a reality to us, who gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. At the best, all he had was an oral tradition from his great, 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 great grandfather, Adam, to really, you know, said. Really, that's where it comes down to, right? He had, he had the oral tradition of his father and his father's father and his father's father back on the way to Adam to describe all of the things that had taken place since the day that God had breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And somehow Enoch, maybe he's one out of a billion, says, I want to be on God's side. I want to know God. I want to walk with Him. I want to lay hold on His realm. One man stands up in all the population of humanity and says, I don't want to live in the demonic realm. People, we walk in the same choices today. Some people think that somehow the devil and his angels died. They're very much alive. And fleshly lusts war against our soul. And Paul said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might so that you can be well equipped to deal with these things that are opposed in you, which are spiritual wickedness and authorities and principalities and powers and wickedness. Come on. Come on, they're alive and well. And, and the subtlety of Satan, the way, that he is, the way that he impacts people's lives, you know, the only thing, the only ability to discern is the Word of God and of the Spirit of God. One of the things I love about purity and holiness is walking in his, with the purity and the holiness and giving ourselves to purely, purity and holiness allows us clear insight to not be in any way conflicted with all the stuff that the demonic could impose upon us that would create confusion of mind, not, no clarity of thought, not at no ability to really discern or see what's going on. You just totally compromise. I'm going to tell you right now, sin is a poison that alters your personality. 
Are you listening to me? God created you to be full of joy and praise and thanksgiving. He made fish to swim and birds to fly and you and me to praise, to live happy. Our lives, who we are, shaped in the image and likeness of God, was never designed to come under the influence and the burden of sin and iniquity. It makes weird, freaky people out of us. Hello, come on, monsters, I'm telling you, demonized, you know, just turned out to look just like the devil. I mean, we were born in sin, and every day we were shaped in iniquity when we were born in this life. Praise God for His glory salvation that we might be born in righteousness and now to be shaped by the holiness of the power of the living God every day. God gave us a new heart and a new spirit so that our hearts could receive everything that He's giving and our spirit could be united in one with Him so that we could hear what ears can't hear, see what eyes can't see understand what's never entered in the heart of man, to begin to interact with the heavenly realm. You're going to have to make everything in your life about the privilege that God has given to us of living out the life of Jesus. I'm, come on now. I'm talking about living out the life of Jesus. And he's also given us the privilege and the opportunity to live out his ministry, both his life and his ministry. That's the will of the Father for our lives. But I mean, let's just start with the life of Jesus. Come on, abundant life. I'm talking about a wellspring springing to where you're never thirsty again, rivers flowing, rivers of his pleasure streaming out of you. People, Satan has showed you pleasure centers that literally corrupt and defile the temple and, and, and are abomination to God. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to show you a whole nother pleasure center. Hello. <laughs> the pleasures that are in his presence and the joy that is at his right hand. I'm telling you, come on. You think about joy unspeakable and full of glory and living in good, that and goodness all day. Just team up on those two. And then I'm saying like, tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to give myself to joy unspeakable, full of glory. And I'm going to give myself to goodness. Who in their right mind would refuse that? <laughs> Who? I mean, you've got to be mentally insane to say no to that. Come on. Yeah. And, and insane is the right word. It's insane. I mean, you've got to be totally whacked out of your cord. To not just say, oh, I don't want no joy and speak full of glory and goodness. I just want to be sad and sorrowful. I want to be upset, oppressed, and beaten down. I want to be depressed. I want to be medicated. You know, come on. I, I, want, to, I, want, to live, I want to live in, a, I want to live in abuse and self-abuse and let everybody else abuse. That is a satanic realm, and people don't get it. I mean, come on, people. Let's get, get, us our, let's get ourselves some revelation. Let's get ourselves some divine insight. Let us get ourselves some knowledge of the Lord and recognize. You think about joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is what Papa's made available to us. It's his disposition and demeanor. <laughs> Look, you know, when God talks to us, and these, I just taken out two fruits of the Spirit real quick out of the list. <laughs> and there's more than nine. I've counted 26. There's more than nine, just the ones that are named there in Galatians. Listen to me. I've counted 26. Let's think about it. And the Lord says, and so to take out joy, and this pliant as joy unspeakable and full of glory as Peter replied it in 1 Peter chapter uh, 1, and, and, and say, okay, I'm going to take that one, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take goodness. And understand that goodness is what Moses seen when God passed before him in the Holy Mount, Exodus yeah. chapter 34. He said, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. Yeah. Watch out. Well, watch out. <laughs> the word of God will mentor you. That's what the, uh, so much of Father's message, and especially starting the emphasis starting in Deuteronomy, all the way through, the Old Testament is so focused on the word being able to mentor you, the word of God being able to shape you, form you. Cause you to understand how to walk with God. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's the means by which we know the will of the Father. It's the means by which we know the way and the conduct and the behavior. The Father created us to function. He says these things aren't far beyond you. This isn't beyond your ability to function in, in and do. He says no in Deuteronomy chapter 30. The word that I've spoken to you isn't far away from you. It isn't beyond you. It is in your heart and in your mouth. That's how easy it is. And I pray tonight that you get the word of God in your heart and your mouth so you can start being successful. Amen. That you can start enjoying the good fruits of the things that the Spirit of the Lord has, hallelujah, blessed us with. Amen. And you know, now I'm just going to make a shift here. Because now Papa's taking it to another level. Praise God. <laughs> the living word came and displayed to us every dimension of the glory and the goodness of the Father. People ask me often, they say, well... 
you know, do you have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to be born again? And, you know, the answer to that is real simply, the, that question is simply answered by the life of Jesus. Jesus was born, hallelujah, the first fruits of those who are and model of that which is a person born again. He was, though he took upon the robes of sinful flesh, though he was made in the form of a servant, he had a divine nature. He was, he's the model of what it means to be born again. He lived that way for 30 years. Pleasing the Father, learning, growing. Captain of our salvation was made perfect uh, through sufferings. He, you know, he learned obedience. Come on, think about that. It's pretty radical, huh? Yeah. He gave himself to butter and honey shall he eat, that he may learn to choose the good and refuse the evil. He had a good diet of the word of God because that's what butter and honey represents. And I don't want to go into those proofs for you. But this is how he was trained. He's the model. He shows us this is it. Here's the model son. This is what, you, what I want you to be. And then that day when God called him out for ministry, he, his, who he was and who he is, especially who he was, went to a whole nother level of manifestation of power and glory as the Holy Ghost empowered him to do all the things that he did. See, God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. And what happens when you get anointed with the Holy Ghost and power? You go about doing good, healing everybody who's oppressed of the devil. I mean, what if, you know, being in his church meetings were wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it was, I mean, we just need more sick people and more diseased people and more unbelievers, you know, to be around the meeting. And in the third world countries, that's what we have. Uh, in America, everybody's busy in fast pursuit of something that is going to get them nowhere. In fact, it's going to ultimately destroy their life, both now and in the future. But that's going to change. That's promptly, that's going to quickly change. It isn't going to be long and all of a sudden all of those things are not going to be there anymore and all those people who've trusted in uncertain riches and in their jobs and in their vocation and in their bank account, all of a sudden they're going to be looking for some answers straight from heaven because without it they're not going to, they're going to die. And when people get in that when the people get in the position of basically about ready to lose their lives suddenly they start getting real for a moment. A reality check. Time out. Reality check. God's Father is getting ready to give us a reality check. Praise God. I'm excited. Somebody said, oh, what about, you know, nuclear explosion? Hey, man, I'm, I'm abiding in the secret place of the Most High. I'm dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. I don't burn. And if I do, my goodness, it's a great transition. Because I go from here right into the presence of the Father. Hallelujah. Well, I'm telling you right now, we are for signs and wonders. I'm going to live my life for signs and wonders. Come on, listen to me. That's what the Word of God is all about. The Word, the living Word, which the written was Word was all about. He said, Lo, or behold, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. Look at me. I am the living Word. This is the full expression of what the written Word describes. Here it is. And then he tells you and I that we're supposed to live in him, and he's supposed to live in us. The, the terms of the covenant are these. John 15, 4. You live my life and I'll live in you. That's what the terms of the covenant is. It literally says, you dwell in me and I dwell in you. <laughs> it says, you know, it's, you live my life and I'll live in you. Here's, here's the, here, wow, we get to live in the eternal word. Here we hear he is giving us a new birth by the word where we're born of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Wow. So that now he's written his precepts, his laws, his judgments, his ordinances, and his commands upon the table of our heart and upon the table of our mind. He's written them there. Hebrews 8.10, Hebrews 10.16, uh, Jeremiah 31.33, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel 36, 26. I can go on and on because I know what I'm talking about. I'm just giving you the word, okay? This is what Papa did for us. And we act like, we act like somehow we don't know. He has more empowered us than Enoch was ever empowered that I can imagine. And yet Enoch so pleased God. He so laid hold on the things of the Spirit of God that, you know, Father, he, he said, he so pleases me. And he gets in the hall, you know, hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But I'm not going to let him die right now. And so now he's been in heaven for over 5,000 years beholding the glory of God. And I'm telling you, he is fit to be tied. Are you with me? I tell you, not only is he super pumped up with the anointing and the fire of God, he's looking at you and I going, come on, man. Papa, let me in. Let me show them how to do this thing. Come on now. And I'm telling you, we got a better witness than, than Enoch, for we have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
and people want to have religion and they want to have ideas and concepts that are fashionable to their thinking, their culture, their mind that's respectable within terms of that which their experience defines. Nonsense. Ignorance. Darkness. God's light shines. It's his word. You and I come and sit in his presence like Samuel did and begin to minister to his revelation, to his manifest presence, which his word unveils. Hallelujah. God the Holy Ghost is the one who's always making the, man, the word manifest, both in Genesis 1-2 and also in Matthew chapter 1. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit came upon a young virgin and that holy thing that was conceived in her was the eternal word incarnate, whom we call Yahweh's Yeshua, or Yahweh's Yeshua, or the Lord's salvation, or Yahoshua, or Jesus. Here's Father's packaged present for you and me. The means to deliver us from our sin. The means to deliver us, to set us free. And I tell you, he's a better deliverer than Moses. And Moses didn't come around and say, look, guys, you know, I've come here to give you the word of faith, to give you the word of salvation, and, and, and then join them in the mud pits of Goshen, just walk around and talk about how they saved positionally by faith. My goodness, he went in there, he brought them out of that mess, hallelujah, with the great signs and wonders and demonstration of the power of God. And Jesus is a better deliverer. A deliverer is one who comes to get you out of prison and set you free from whatever it was you were in prison to. Come on, somebody is going to have to begin to think different about the transition that took place when we were born again. No, we're looking for excuses to be conformed to the world. We're looking for the excuses to go ahead and live our life undisciplined and overrun by the powers of darkness. It ain't going to get you nowhere on that day. It won't get you anywhere. She just said, the word which I've spoken unto you, it will judge you in that day. Hello. When his word becomes spirit and life, I'm telling you, you're going to step into some relationship. It becomes food. As long as it's rules and regulations, it's religion. But when it's spirit and life, it's relationship. Hallelujah. Woo! Ha, 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 ha. Come on, people. Come on. Hallelujah. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Praise God and the Holy Ghost gun touched me. Yeah. I love the Word of God. Hallelujah. You know, I've studied and, you know, with people in school that are Haredim, uh, ultra-Orthodox, is what Haredim is in, in the Jewish uh, community. And, uh, I, you know, just a lot of people that have been giving themselves to the Word of God. Boy, they can quote the Word of God in the original language in Hebrew. Ivrit. And, but you know what? <laughs> It has not profited them anything. They don't know us. They've never experienced a single thing they're talking about. It's all nothing but mental sin. It's all nothing but knowledge. Because only the living power of a miraculous working grace that only is found in Christ Jesus can make the word alive in you. Hallelujah. I mean, were you and I born of incorruptible seed? Come on, think about it, dear people. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And the Holy Spirit's here to mentor us. Now, I want to just, let's, let's make a transition real quickly into Colossians. And um, so I want to go to Colossians, and I believe it's chapter 2. You can help me. Uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Give me the verse. Anybody? Huh? Huh? Colossians 3.16. Everybody got that? Open your Bibles, Colossians 3.16. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit's the one that makes the living word that makes the living word alive. He makes the written word of life alive. He manifests the word of God through me and through you. Father spoke the word and created all of that. Hallelujah. Men will eventually discover that after about a couple billion years, but they don't have that long. If they were continually to pursue, you know, truth, they had discovered that God did it exactly like he said he did it. Hallelujah. He spoke it into existence with his, with his power. Hallelujah. With his spoken word. Father's spoken things over you and I, and we're going to have to agree with them and walk in it. You're going to have to quit being, we're going to have to, be, we're going to have to quit being what we believe. No, Anna. 
touch her right now, Lord Jesus. Her mom and dad's gone. And so she's fussy. And we're going to have to help her. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus, get, get happy. Lift your hands towards heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch her. Touch her, Lord. Touch her right now. Hallelujah. Just sit right here, baby. Sit right here. Let me give you my Bible. Let me give you my Bible so you can follow along. You go, we're in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. So that's a heavy Bible, isn't it? Should probably get you another one. I don't want anybody left out. I'm a pastor. I take care of everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kasu tarine kiste beli tarana sipoki yatalevesi. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Here's a, here's a Bible your size. <laughs> Hallelujah. People, I'm talking about things that if you'll start doing tomorrow, you're going to be successful. I'm, gonna tell you, I'm, I'm talking about things that if you start doing it, you're going to start enjoying what it means to be an heir of God and to have all that Father has now available to you where you can access it. Father makes it really simple. He says to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and there you're going to be filled with all the fullness of God. How easy could it be? And how wonderful it could it be? What a great activity that we get to involve ourselves in and immediately step over into all the fullness of God. There is every realm of all that man could ever think or ask. Just the ability to, to sit down and, and have that kind of fellowship and that kind of communion. And Papa takes it beyond that. He, down, he resources us with everything with every spiritual blessing, with all that we have need of. You know, uh, it, I'm going to say this again. I said it this morning, but just by way of just really just trying to get you in here and set this up, because I don't know if people have really listened to this. When Jesus was addressing the rich man and he was telling him, look, all that you have, you need to go sell and give it to the poor. The, the rich man couldn't hear Jesus properly. You know, he's thinking that he's got to give up a whole bunch of things. No, 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 no. He was just going to remove out of the way those things that was hindering what, all that God wanted to bless him with. That was all that was going on. It's proven, too, because the disciples then said, wait a minute. How about us? We've forsaken everything for you. Jesus said, nobody forsakes everything for me and for the kingdom except they're going to get a hundredfold in this life. Think about that. He could have told the rich man that too. He could have said, man, you don't know what you just did. The rich man, imagine the rich man said, okay, I'm going to do it. And he goes and he does it and he comes back and Jesus is going, you just passed the test big time. Babe, you're sitting over here. You're sitting on this end, darling, right over here. You're sitting over here. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank, lift your hands towards heaven. There you go. Father, touch her right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mom's in Australia. Jesus is here. Remember the conversation we had last night? Huh? We were watching Jungle Book together, and, you know, she said when, you know, all, you know Shere, Shere Khan's coming. And I said, she said, she said, well, no, sure, Khan's coming. We're in, we're in trouble. And I said, no, no, we're not in trouble. She said, yeah, because Jesus is right here beside me. And if anything comes after me, he's going to protect me. I said, exactly. We've got no problem. See, you can even preach the gospel from Jungle Book 1. <laughs> Come on, people. Come on. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll take up the identity that has been given you in God. I, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that everything that Father has defined you to be, you will allow that definition to be that which you believe. That's, what, that's how you act. That's how you move. I mean, when somebody persecutes you, you're looking to the Holy Ghost and saying, feel me right now so that I can bless them. Come on. I mean, our response, needs, our response needs to be the response that the Lord gives to us by His Word. Where we're not searching around wondering, wait a minute, what is my proper response? What is my proper approach to the situation? How is it that I'm supposed to live out my life? Look at, look at, um, look at the servant of Abraham. Hey, sweetheart, you might have to go take her up and give her a little spanking. Why don't you go with Mimi? Get some corporal punishment. Because if it doesn't work one way, it's going to work another. Hey, just leave her here, baby. We got grandparent duty over here, people. Come here, darling. We got grandparent duty. 
Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Did you want to go get a spanking too? <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, we, Father works with us with his word. He tries his best to talk to us, talk to us, reason with us. He bless us. But he says in Hebrews chapter 12, if you don't get it, I'm going to chasten you. In fact, he uses the word, I'm going to flog you. <laughs> Go read it. I'm going to tell you right now. He flogs or scourges every son that he receives. Come on now. I, I'm happy. You know, the scripture says that, um, Paul said that, if we are judge of the Lord, then we are chastened of the Lord that we would not, so that we will not be condemned with the world. Say, I'm going to get mine now. I'm going to say it again. He says, if we are chastened of the Lord, then we are judged of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And he's going to take care of us because Father has purpose to finish the work that he began in us. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. I mean, he's got a love that never fails. Come on, man. I don't care. I mean, listen, I don't care how, you know, how you know, slow you and I are. I don't care how slow we are. Father is long-suffering and persistent. And he doesn't let up and he doesn't give up. If there's anything in your life to work with, if you'll just stay in the meetings, I promise you we're going to get you fixed. Hallelujah. I, you stay in the meeting. You're going to change. I, know, I don't care how messed up you are. I don't care how seemingly perpetual backslider you are. You stay in the meetings. And I promise you there is going to be an invasion of the power of God in your life. It's just that when we walk away from God, we step off, we step out of, you know, out of interaction with Him, and, or that we begin to become somehow deceived because we lie to ourselves, and now we're no longer cooperative with Him. If there's any cooperation at all with the Father, I'm going to tell you, He's going to get the job done. Hallelujah. How, can, you, can you sit here a second while I open up my Bible? Okay, thanks, baby. I love you so much. Are you in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you about how to have the word right, on, right there. Dwelling in you. Being rich on the inside of you. Just, hey, it's wonderful having the Holy Ghost just bringing into our remembrance all the time. Just flooding our heart and our thinking realm with the word. Hallelujah. Uh, it's how Papa talks to us. That's how we learn how to function in the word of knowledge. And the discerning of spirits. Huh? It's not touchy-feely, it's his word. It's a light into our path. We get, we get an understanding directly from Father. We know exactly what, what he's purposed for us to do. So, because he trains us through his word. But he doesn't only just train us through his word because he's given us the spirit of truth who's not doing nothing but speaking the word of truth and he's with us and in us. But, but the fact of it is, is people aren't listening. And I want you to begin to listen tonight. I want you to begin to understand how to connect with the Holy Ghost instead of connecting with your circumstance. I know what's going to happen. You're going to wake up in the morning and the pull is going to be on you to get under the taskmaster's rod. That's your job. And your whole mind and your whole life and your whole being is going to be consumed with your job. And your whole, you know, happiness or sadness or whatever, you know, is going to be described by the events of the day. And that's got us, you got to shut that down. Hallelujah. And it's going to come as a direct connection, as a result of a direct connection with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to talk to you, because what I'm saying here is, is that as you begin to give yourself over to what God's Word says and what the Spirit of the Lord is showing us and teaching us and empowering us to do, you're going to find yourself living out as a living out the life of a sign and a wonder, living out divine provision, living out divine protection, living out a divine perfection going on of an interaction that is totally supernatural. It's a heavenly life. You can have days of heaven upon earth right now. Enoch is one person in the midst of every opposition that you and I could ever even imagine and beyond what we can imagine, waving at us and saying, hey, this heavenly realm on earth really does exist. Come on, okay, why don't you come on over? <laughs> and Jesus is the door into that realm while we're sitting around all beaten up and sad and sorrowful and depressed. Hello. 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 Some of you look just like Enoch. 
you're on the verge of, I can see some of you on the verge of, and inside you're Anna, outside you're holding it together. <laughs> you, got your, you got yourself, your adult discipline on here. Finally, wants to take all that discontentment away, he wants to take all of the anxiety away, he wants to take all that sorrow away, he wants to take all of that, that, that conflict away, all that compromise away. He wants to bring you and I over into a place of just surrendered over to what God, the Holy Ghost, wants to do through our body, through our being. You know that the, the body without the spirit's dead? Your body's just an instrument that the spirit moves through, like a pianist gets on the piano and plays. The piano's dead, it's sort of silent, can't do it. Hey, piano, would you please uh, start the key of G? I want to sing a song. Piano. <laughs> piano. Piano. Amazing! You're sitting there and you're doing nothing. <laughs> the musicians are not there. It's the spirit that plays our life. And our spirit has been joined unto the Holy Ghost and made one spirit with him. But it's a decisions, it comes down to decisions that you and I are constantly making. And Father is in the midst of it wanting to perfect everything that concerns us so that always our response, always our demeanor and our disposition has been defined in Him so we begin to hook up with Him. When we hook up with the Word, we're hooking up with Him. All heavens mobilize to come and help us, strengthen us, uphold us, give us everything that God has said. The big issue is there's a very few people that really believe that God is a present person right now, a God that is very near to us and very present in time of need. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's time to change. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. I got one hand clap, one hand raised, five people smiling, three people glooming. Come on, people. Come on, you're going to have to participate with these things. Yeah. You're going to have to lay out. You're going to have to lay hold on them. You're going to have to reach out and say, I'm taking that. You can live, you can live in the disappointment of all of your failure. And all the things that you've not been willing to do or able to do or understood how to do. Or you can say, man, I'm going to tell you right now, my life's not over. I'm now set up to live better than I've ever lived before. I'm now set up to do it right better, better than ever before. I'm set up now to move with God, to yield with God. I'm done with me. I'm telling you that chapter's closed. It's closed. That book, in fact, we're throwing that book away. I'm grabbing this one. I'm going to live this one. Huh? I mean, come on. How long do you have to beat your head up against the wall to realize it hurts? Come on. Come on. There's a life, an abundant life of grace, a gifting of God that men have tried to explain away. I tell you, His Word is alive and living today. And everything that He said, He's right now present and able to bring it to pass. And anybody who's willing to go all the way with Him, He's looking for some obedience, which is the only legitimate response to His love. Yeah. So He says. So He says. He says. And I'm going with what He says. Yeah. Men say different. He says. If you love me, you'll obey me. Hallelujah. And our living God is here perfecting obedience in us through the spirit of obedience. And what is he trying to get us to obey? He's trying to get us to obey happy, love, good, fun, reality, blessings. How, come on, look at what he's trying to get us to obey. Hello! Look at what he's trying to get us to cooperate with. Abundant life, rivers of living, river, rivers of his, rivers of his pleasure, rivers of his pleasure. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, the scripture tells us this, it says, let, now of course verse 15, powerful, is not a problem, listen, 15 is easy, this, this is the environment I was born in. It's where I live. Let the peace of God rule my heart. I'm going to tell you right. Whew, my, my, my. If people would stop overriding peace, you'd get smarter than you could have ever imagined you could have ever been. Just stop overriding peace. 
just understand how to get on your face before the Lord. Better yet, how to get in your dance mood every morning. Hallelujah. Get happy and joyful in Him, worshiping Him, consecrating your life, submitting. I'm going to tell you right now, repentance is the opportunity to be committed to God's way. Listen to me. Repentance, God has granted the gift of repentance to all men so that we now may be committed to every day. Get up and say, Papa, I'm serving you. I'm done with darkness. I'm done with the ways of this world. I'm done with iniquity. I'm walking with you. Amen. And he, there, he, he's mobilized all heaven for our, for our need yes. and for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in that place, woo, peace settles in. Praise God. I tell you right now, men, I, you know, people, if you go to bed worried at night, something's wrong with you. But I'm telling you right now, God will fix you. He'll shut that mess down. Praise God. He'll shut that mess down. So you can get yourself some peace. People walking around in condemnation. Condemnation is actually the opposite of peace. Did you know that? That's why Paul said to the Ephesians, in the Ephesians, to the Ephesians chapter 2, he said, God says, peace to those who are near and to those who are far away. Come on in. He's all, ultimately peace brings fellowship, it removes the hindrance or the breach that, that ultimately was levied against us, giving us no right to come near him. Right? God loved Moses, but he said, you don't come near me. You hear me? I love you, but you can't come near me because you're everything different than I am. We're going to work on that. Huh? I mean, behind the scenes, that's what Papa saying. We're going to work on that. And he did. Because I'm telling you right now, <laughs> Moses laid hold on that encounter with God, said, I can't get enough. Paul said, you got to go, listen, you can't have any more, you'll die. He's like, he don't even hear what he said, nothing about die, it didn't even matter. I don't care if I die, I want more. Hallelujah. Come on. We hold on to our life. Man, people, God said, you can't see me or can't have any more, you'll die. We'll go, okay. I understand. Not Moses. He didn't hear nothing about die. He didn't care about die. He care, cared only about in that, that fellowship, that intimacy. The door's been open to you. There ain't nobody left out here tonight. Ain't nobody left out here tonight. Hallelujah. Come on now. Ain't nobody left out here. Come on now. Listen to me. Ain't nobody left out here tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Anna told me this morning, she was singing a Holy Ghost song. She started off singing this wonderful Holy Ghost song, and, and then she went into doing her own words. She said, I just wrote that. She said, and when I get big like my mama, I'm going to preach. As soon as she said that, I begin to pray. And not out loud. I said, Father, I thank you for protecting that. I thank you that you've made available all heaven's power and authority so that that commitment can be kept. Hallelujah. And it's available to me that when I begin to speak to you, when I begin to ask you, come on, people, listen to what Father has made available. That all we got to do is ask and the flow of the Holy Ghost will begin to bust out of us. Amazing. We want to sit around and be religious. Want to sit around and learn some multivariable equations or be all stoked on ourselves because we understand physical chemistry, which only a half a dozen people in the world get. And it's nonsense, people. Huh? Oh, I can do half equations. Big deal. Huh? Oh, I can do math that I can do math, I can do integrals that you can't even forget about it. Papa's offered you the opportunity to walk over in fellowship and oneness with him with the outworking of the power of the Holy Ghost to be moving through your life on a way that was beyond what Enoch could have, beyond what Elijah could have. And we're going to do what? You're going to do what? Huh? People sit around so sad, so beaten down, so under the cloud of depression and religion trying to tell me about how much they know about God. Yeah, right. You been you might have drank the Kool-Aid, but I didn't have any. <laughs> uh, come on now. There's a cloud of glory that you and oh basi talaba. In a in a In his presence is fullness of joy. Don't you tell me about how the Holy Ghost is flowing through you when the joy is in there. Give me a break. And, and, and listen, the reality of it is, though, 
He wants to mature you, develop you into a place where you can live in happy, where you can live in abundant life. But you've got to cooperate. You've got to at least get a little bit of half a smile, like you're like, you know, maybe just paralyzed on one side. Half a smile, something, a little grin, a little crack in the door. He's banging on the door of even those who've refused him. He's banging on the door of those who are lukewarm that he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He's still banging on the door saying, if any man will open the door, I'll come in and I'll fellowship with you. He pleads with us night and day. And people still want it their own way. Come on, people. It's time to hear the Word of God. Just obey the Word of God. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Come under the rod of His Word. Praise the Lord. It's good. <laughs> Say, God, I want, Father, I'm hungry for everything you've got. I want more. I want more of that which you supplying. I want to mature in those things that you are doing. I'm going to give myself to your word. Not to just read it. Not to just intellectualize it. But to do it. I'm telling you, if people would just do Matthew 5, 6, and 7, their whole lives would be changed. They'd come into success. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That's it. Huh? Come on, people. Let's get focused here. And that's just simple things to do in response to your situations that you encounter so that your response looks like the love of God. That's all it is. Bless when you're cursed. <laughs> Bless when you're per persecuted. Love it when you're hated. I mean, this real basic show and display of God's love. Hallelujah. I mean, one of the things that the Lord dealt with me, it was recent, it was within the past year, maybe a little bit more, was that he wanted me to give myself to loving people the first three seconds that I met them. In the first three seconds, love them. I had no idea the level of human influence and even demonic influence that I gave place to by being of any other disposition. You give yourself to loving a person and, because what's going to happen is immediately, immediately is going to happen unless there's some kind of chemistry. I don't know what that is. But you know, <laughs> there's going to be suspicion criticism, fault finding. There's going to be all these various different events going on, interplaying with this. Everything, the elevator, you know, you look from stone to the top of the head, down to the bottom of the feet, back up to the top of the elevator. <laughs> Sizing a person up. Nonsense. That's giving yourself over to the prince of the power of the air. I'm not doing it. I've given myself over to Almighty God. He bought me. He paid for me. He has a receipt. He has the receipt of my life. I'm not going to deny the Lord who bought me. You know, when we read that in Thessalonians, people think, oh, well, they're just denying Christ Jesus. No, they're denying that he bought them. They're denying that he has brought them into a place where he is their master and we are his servants, servants to obey him. We've resigned our own will to say, I'm only living to do your will, Father. I've said now, I'm not going to do my will no more. I'm not giving no place to it. I've drawn a bloodline between me and everything that is in the world and there's no way that Satan can cross over the bloodline and I'm not going to cross over to him. Amen. Come on. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Satan's deception will make you temporary and give you temporary insanity. You'll do things that you can't believe you did them. Huh? And then praise God, the spirit of sons witness on the inside of you because you grieved and sorrow, godly sorrow touches you and you begin to cry out and repent. But then Satan comes with all of his harassing, tormenting, condemnation, guilt laying, shame, places it upon you and it takes you how long to get over it? Huh? Nuts. Get off that sad go around. <laughs> you hear me? Get off that thing. Come on now. Get off that thing. Come on now. Hallelujah. Besides that, drink the blood. Just drink the blood all day long. Communion. My whole fellowship, the whole merit of my fellowship is the communion of his blood that was poured out for me, that washed me that, from my sin. Though my sins was like the double dyed stain of crimson, like blood, murderous blood. He washed me with white. You see, he washed me so white, I'm white like the, the clean wool of a lamb. Hallelujah. Prabhasa Teresa Pahala. Hallelujah. Ah. And that's how I stay clean. Praise God. And for all eternity, my life is by the blood. I live by the blood. The life of my being is in the blood. Christ Jesus' blood. 
Hallelujah. My strength is in eating his, his word, his body, that which he gave of himself to me. He gave himself to me. He gave himself for me and he gave himself to me. It's about sometimes somebody allows the word of God to be mixed with faith that they can step into the inheritance. Yeah. Read Hebrews 3 and 4. Understand why it didn't profit Israel. Because we keep, re we keep repeating history. We keep repeating history. Well, those things that were done before, they're going to be done again. What Nebuchadnezzar did in Babylon is going to be done again by the Antichrist, but on a whole another scale. But almost same territory, repeating the same kind of actions, but just on another level. It happens over and over and again in, in the societies and cultures of humanity. People, God's called us over into another place. Yeah. He said, who's going to walk with me? Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. He said, who's going to be trained with me? I've given you the access. I've given you the cleansing. I've given you the empowerment. I've washed you in my blood. I've made you fit. I've made you fit. Hallelujah. I've given you everything that you need that pertains unto life and godliness by my divine power so that you can walk in my glory and in my purity. That's what God says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People think I'm making it up as I go. I'm quoting scripture to you. Praise God. His word is living and it's powerful. <laughs> it changed you whether you want to be changed or not. It might not change you the way he wants you to be changed, but the encounter messes you up. <laughs> it messes you up. I pray that you'll go ahead and submit to the word and let God's word produce something glorious out of you. Otherwise, you're going to be conflicted bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. And hopefully so conflicted, so bad that suddenly you give up, give it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, baby. My Anna, she's going she to grow up. She's going to preach. She's going to be standing here. It's not too long from the, she's five now. Ten years, she's going to be 15. I held our daughter, Ruthiana. She's not here tonight. Ruthiana, five, six years old, mom's witness. She just naturally flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. She didn't even understand it. I have somebody call me, and she's just playing, bounce around in the back seat. She says, oh, that's so-and-so calling you. And that was before caller ID. <laughs> Hello? Sure enough, I turn around, kind of glance. Yeah. And then go ahead and talk to the person. Then she just told me who was calling. Huh? But we held her back. We wouldn't let her get into it too deep. Because I understand, you start moving in the anointing, you said people, said somebody before people, all, got, all the enemy is going to do is attack them through people. Understand it. It's not about the fact that God can't keep her. It's just that she's going to have to get assaulted by everything, every person that has a mind yielded to the demonic realm that hates the anointing. They're going to find criticism, faults, issues, all the nonsense. So we held her back until she was 15. 16, really. It got to be long. Anna's going to be 15, 11 years. She's going to be 16 years old. We're going to let her go. Hallelujah. I know, depending, depending on where we're at at that time, we might just actually let her go earlier, even if all that stuff's coming at her. Huh? Because I'm, I'm looking at Father sending his fire, such and such a strong wind of his presence is just going to shut the stuff down. Yeah. You're going to touch his stuff. Papa loves us, but you're not going to touch his sacred stuff. You're not touching his sacred stuff. Are you not going to touch his sacred stuff? Uzzah got all, you know, Uzzah got all uppity. You know what I'm saying? Uzziah, rather. Uzzah and Uzziah. Uzziah got all uppity. Uzzah was actually an angel. Uzziah got all uppity. He was doing good. He was walking with God. He was doing the right thing. He was getting blessed. So he thought one day, well, I'm going to go in there and be like my, my great granddaddy David, King David, and I'm going to offer some incense in the holy place. So he goes in, starts offering incense. The priest come rushing in and said, what are you doing? You have no right. You're not anointed to handle these sacred things. And he starts getting all, you know, responsive on him and everything. Next thing you know, leprosy breaks out on his forehead. Suddenly he's willing to be rushed out of the place. Huh? And he spends his left the rest of his life in the lepers' house. You don't touch. He loves us. He not touch, you're not gonna make, you're not gonna profane his holy and sacred things. There is a mercy on us, but there is a mercy on us. But I'm gonna tell you something. I've watched people get in all kinds of trouble because they because they sought God, stepped into a realm of the anointing, and then continued to play their 
earthly gains on God in that anointing. You don't, do, you don't mess with that. You don't mess with that. This is sacred. Father wants to develop you and I because with a hunger and a thirst. It's free, but it ain't cheap. It, 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 God gives it freely, but it's still sacred. The holies of holies is as sacred today as it was then. It's just been moved into our hearts. Amen. Amen. In the holiness revival, a preacher's daughter wrote a song, said, take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be your royal throne. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Wow. Think about it. You can enthrone him upon the very seat of your heart and your affections. Tomorrow, tonight, when, when that happens, a smile is going to be in to take over you. Come on. Hallelujah. Loneliness, loneliness is going to go far, far away from you. Huh? Huh? The void isn't going to be able to captivate you. You're going to be so filled to overflowing, you're going to have like rivers coming out of you. Somebody says, well, you like something? You say, I don't have room. Enemy comes along and try to give you something. There's no room. See, it's floods. Floods of heaven's coming out of myself. I have no room for what you're peddling. I have no desire for it either. I'm so overwhelmed with the divine pleasures and the divine goodness of his presence. I have no room for your trash, for your slop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the word, listen, let the peace of God rule you. Just by going ahead and just submitting yourself to God. Hallelujah. 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 To which also you are called in one body and be thankful. He says... Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Listen to this. We're talking about that means by which God forms us and develops us. We're talking about the power of life that makes us successful. That's going to cause us not to listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Going, no, nah, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> to not stand in the way of sinners. Say, I'm, I'm not watching that. I'm, I'm not interested in that net. I'm not interested in that mess. I don't want that. That's pulling my heart over into another realm. It's pulling my heart over into lasciviousness. It's pu pulling my heart over into some kind of filthiness. It's pulling my heart over into some kind of earthliness, some kind of other interest. You listen to these success, you listen to these, you know, these uh, motivational speakers and success speakers. Man, by the time they finish talking, you feel that you want to go buy the whole $15,000 package because you're going to be, you know, you buy it hook, line, and sinker. I mean, they like, they hypnotize you, you know? And it's like, you know, it just takes your heart and your affections off into a whole other realm. I'm not going to listen to that stuff. I'm not going to listen to the kissing of that snake. I'm not going to give myself over to the hypnotist of this world to try to get my, captivate my affections to be involved in something else. Listen to me. Why? Because the word of God is on the inside, flooding on the inside of me, saying, oh, you're my heir. <laughs> I bless you with all spiritual blessings. Do this. I want, you to, I want you to lay hands on the sick. I want you to command the devils to go out. I want you to represent me in the realm of love. I want you to learn how to speak by the Spirit instead of speaking earthly. I want you to put on the mind of Christ, the mind of the Spirit. I want you to be clothed with the mantle of Almighty God. Be endued with Christ the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Be put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Hallelujah. And make no provision for that which wars against your soul. Did you see how I took those two verses of Scripture and brought them together? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. In other words, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against your soul. So I just simply said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no opportunity for those things that would war against your soul. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. My rabate. And somebody said, well, I, I want to do this. How do I do it? Well, well, let's just look here for a second. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Hallelujah. That's my divine insight, you know. Hallelujah. Uh, wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with him. Isn't that good? Right? Uh, do it. Wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with them. Hallelujah. What a great reward. What a great blessing to, that comes out of this. And then he says... In teaching and admonition, ad, admonishing one another. And look at what happens. Look at, in teaching and admonishing one another when the word of Christ is allowed to dwell in you richly. What's going to happen? There's going to be psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. 
You're going to be singing and making a melody in your heart. There is a worship that is going to be going on. There is a praise that's going to be going on. I, I, looked, I looked at a number of different people over the past couple of months that were sick and in disease, and I looked at them, I said, do you know how to dance? And they looked back at me like, what? I said, do you know how to dance? Well, I used to. Well, let's try it again. Let's warm up those old dancing muscles. And now let's go ahead and start dancing before the Lord because you don't look like you've had a good happy moment for a long time. You don't look like you've had a good rejoicing and joyful moment for a long time. You can't tell me you're going to praise if you're not happy. I'm telling you that is just absolutely whacked out. You got to be happy to give thanks. You got to be happy to praise. So I want you to start dancing. People get up in the morning and start dancing. If you don't get happy just dancing, go look at yourself in the mirror. You'll start <laughs> laughing at yourself. And that's the first step towards getting happy. Huh? And then start delighting yourself in the Lord. Start worshiping and start giving him praise. Start understanding that there's a real action and activity to faith to begin to interact with the Almighty God rather than sitting around all sorrowful and sad wondering why he don't come help you. <laughs> God, why don't you come help me? Oh God, why am I in this situation? Oh God. He ain't gonna, he don't want to be around that. You don't want to be around that. You would like to get out of you. I'm going to tell you right now, Papa's not going to hook it up, hook up with that stuff. He goes where the joy is. <laughs> he supplies it and he's only going to be around, Father's not going to be around sadness and sorrow. He ain't going to be there. He can constantly say to us, come on up. Come on up. He came down, it's done. He's gone up. He's saying, come on up. He said, come on up. He said, irrabasate yarro. The, one of the biggest lies that I, that's been told in the church is that picture of that beach scene, you know, two track, two sets of prints in the sand, and now there's one set of prints in the sand, and I asked the Lord what happened. He said, well, I carried you through that. Give me a break. <laughs> He's not coming and mixing it up with sorrow and sadness and doubt and unbelief. You can't please God if you're in the flesh. You can't please God if you're in... If you in doubt and unbelief, it's impossible to please God without faith. I said it's impossible. I said it's impossible. I said it's impossible because God said it's impossible. God said you cannot please. Paul said you can't please God, anyone who's in the flesh. But you're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit. God's a spirit, you're a spirit. Let's get into this, this realm of heaven. The word tells us how. The word of truth tells us how. Hallelujah. 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 Now, there is a corollary verse of scripture to this. Ephesians chapter 5. And here's where the Lord's telling us. He said, don't be unwise. He said, don't be unwise. That's how the translators translated it. Actually, the Greek word is maru, which is derived from an Arabic word, moron. <laughs> yeah, sure is. Actually, moron is an Arabic word. You didn't know you spoke Arabic, did you? <laughs> Arabi, moron. It means fool. <laughs> I mean, I like the impact of that. It's like, it's like Father loves it. Don't be a moron anymore. I'm giving you the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Now listen, he tells us this is how we redeem the time for the day is evil. People got all these ideas about how they're going to redeem the time. Some people are so clueless they think Hillary's going to do it for them. And they run serious, believe it or not. Be with the actually, and then there's others just as clueless, maybe a little worse, that think Trump is going to do it for them. I mean, what the, you know, look, uh, we don't have a pick there. In fact, we don't need one there. In fact, this government wasn't even designed for that in, in the first place. In fact, my goodness, praise God, Jesus Christ is the King of Heaven. He's made the church the cure for any nation in any society and any culture. Amen. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm about to stand up and start applauding and getting excited about my own preaching here in just a couple of minutes. Somebody's delivering the word. Somebody's telling it like it is. Somebody's speaking forth that which will produce change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God works every miracle by his word. He proved it in the living word, Christ Jesus. 
every salvation, every cure, every remedy, every encouragement, every power of God displayed to destroy the enemy of your soul. The Word. Amen. The Word. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word, the revelation, the declaration, the proclamation, the definition of Almighty God was manifested, made flesh. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to get over here. I'm going to jump right on in here. I'm going to get so deep in this realm of divine power and God's goodness and glory and this wonderful work of salvation. You can't find me. <laughs> Ah, you can't touch me. I have no logical interaction with the realms of men's thinking. Hallelujah. I'm going to step over to this place where God looks at as though it's just, he looks at the children in the spirit and says, go raise the dead. I give you so much power in the realms of the heavenly to represent me. Go raise the dead. Yeah. <laughs> go cast out devils. These are my people. Yeah. That's what he says. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name that cast out devils. We walk by them. We participate with them. We allow them in our life. We allow them to entertain us. Satan's got so many venues, so many mediums that he uses. Mediums. Not just media, mediums that he uses. To ensnare us. To reach out with his claw. To pull us into his stuff. We really lose out there. Satan, if he cannot stop us from moving into the realms of that which Father has made available to us in Christ Jesus, he wants to do everything he can possibly do to neutralize us. He hates the anointing. He hates the display of these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will speak with new tongues. He hates the tongues. He hates the language of the Spirit. He hates the expression of anything that the Holy Ghost is doing him, doing. Because I'm going to tell you what praying in the Holy Ghost will do. It will build you, build you up in your most holy faith. And when you're walking in holy faith, watch out every devil in your way. I'm telling you right now is trembling. They know their moments are numbered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He says, don't be unwise, be wise. Redeeming the time, for the day is evil. Don't be drunk with wine. Today we have people walking around in the church, 40 years ago in the church, it was known to be a demonic power associated with alcohol. We've lost any spiritual discernment. What's happening is people are walking around with a cup of judgment in their hand because all the way through the scripture, a cup of wine in your hand declares the judgment of God is upon your life. Go read the Bible. People are a prophet to themselves. They prophesy over themselves. They so devoid, devoid of discernment and understanding. They're walking around in a stupor, in a drunken state with a cup of judgment in their hand. Oh, yeah. Somebody said, oh, alcohol isn't that, and try to describe some physiological response of the endocrine system and the neurological system. Give me some physiological chemistry explanation. Give me a break. And I know what you're talking about because the person you learned it from doesn't know what they're talking about. It's a wild guess. <laughs> Hallelujah. We get enough people in here that understand clinical science to say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's a wild guess. I tell you right now, I see somebody comes and wants Jesus and, they're, and they are drunk in alcohol. I can cast out the devil and they'll sober up. I can cast out the devil of someone who is high on heroin or other drugs. And immediately when I cast that devil out, I address that devil. It goes and they're completely sober. Huh? Tell me, man, I'm, I'm in this. I'm in this. I'm in a reproducible realm of understanding a spiritual dimension the physiological chemistry can't even touch on for a second. I'm being taught by God Almighty. I'm not being taught, taught by somebody who's on the 23rd edition and getting ready to go to the 24th. Are you with me? Huh? 
<laughs> constantly evolving their concepts and their theories and their ideas concerning these things. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I'm at, don't be drunk on wine, because if you are, forget about it. You're not going to get filled. I said forget about it. I never met a person who gives himself to alcohol who knows how to flow in the Holy Ghost. Not one. Not a sip, not a little bit. Come on. Don't be, is it opposed to God? Yes, yes, is opposed to the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, don't be drunk with wine or don't be intoxicated. Literally, the Greek word methe is intoxicated. Somebody in the church needs to read the signs on I 5 and 15. <laughs> huh? <laughs> if you drive and bust, you drive and. And we don't have that much wisdom in the church. Give me a break. They got more spiritual understanding and revelation than people that are supposed to be walking around the discernment of the Holy Ghost, knowing right from wrong, light, light from death, darkness from light, truth from a lie, Satan from God, demons versus the Holy Ghost. We've lost our discernment. We've lost our insight. We've lost our understanding. We've lost our knowledge because we departed from the Word. It's time to return to the Word. It's time to return to the Word. Women were practicing witchcraft in Ezekiel chapter 18, or forgive me, Ezekiel chapter 16, saying they were the prophets of the Lord. Men were lying, were lying with cult prostitutes at the tabernacle door saying they were worshiping Yehoah. <laughs> Deception has no end. The immorality and the witchcraft and the sorcery that has so taken over the house of God, God says to Ezekiel, come and let me show you what they're doing. Let me show you how they profaned everything from the court into the inner sanctum and say it's by me. And everyone lights their, lights, their, 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 lights, their, their candles and their incense and worships their God with their debauchery. With their sexual immorality. Just read it sometime. Hosea chapter 4 verses 11 through 14. Um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 8 and uh, most of the whole chapter. And they were saying they're worshiping God. Wherein have we not, wherein have we disobeyed you, Lord? Everything you've done, everything you've been doing is an act of disobedience. So God could have responded. People, deception has no boundaries. Deception has no logic. Those who are deceived can't see it. You talk about a blind spot. You talk about spiritual blindness. People think that mind-blinding spirits are just for those who are lost who don't know Jesus. No, mind-blinding spirits work in part in God's people who are clean escape from the powers of darkness. And that's why Peter addresses it in 2 Peter chapter 1 and says, You are blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. Why? You compromised. You did not give yourself to walking in the Word. You did not give all diligence to making your calling and election. You did not give all diligence to adding to your faith purity and to purity, knowledge and to knowledge, self-control. And he goes through the list of the divine attributes and the divine character of Almighty God that should be splendor, should be glorious and and, and in a, in a realm of wonder and splendor to us. But it's not because we're captivated with the demonic of pride and greed and haughtiness and arrogance and boastfulness. True. God's called us to lowliness and meekness. We're, we're, we're captivated by the uncleanness and the riotous living and the immorality. We don't understand the beauty and the splendor of purity. It's a darkness that is set in. It's a deception by the powers of darkness, what people can see. Tonight the Word of God is shining like a light in a dark place. Yeah. You do well if you take heed yeah. and do the Word. Yeah. It's a light shining in a dark place. Uh, this and this is, I'm quoting Scripture just in case you don't know it. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. And just in case you are unaware, these are not my skills of oratory. This is the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> his word is in me. And by the power of his word, I've conquered Satan at every point. I write unto young men because his word abides in you. And you've defeated Satan at every point. You've overcome the wicked one. My word 
have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. His word is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Dividing asunder joint from marrow, soul from spirit. Is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. By it, he framed the heavens. Hallelujah. 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 God upholds all things by the word of his power. Hallelujah. God, in times past, in diverse manners, spoken to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son. Oh, Christ Jesus is speaking. The Word is speaking, whom he's appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. By whom also he made the world. By whom also he made me. He made you a new creation, a new creature, washed with the water regeneration, renewed by the power of the glorious working of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give myself over to, I'm going to give myself over to doing what the Apostle Paul do, did. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Ah, he had the goods I want. I'm going to do what he did. I don't care what religion says. I'm going to do what he did. I'm going to give myself to that which Father poured out on the day of Pentecost that he called the promise of the Father, the treasure chest of heaven. I'm, I don't care what religion says. I want more of this expression of the divine power of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. I don't want a little. Hallelujah. I want, I want a greater. I want to give way to a greater flood of joy. I want to give way to a greater flood of love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. For as he is, so are we right now in this present world. Come on, man. By the word of God, you shall overcome. By the word of God, you shall be established. Amen. If you're not living by the word, I'm going to tell you right now, you're living by the counsel of the ungodly. True. If you're not standing beholding the works of Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you're standing in the way of sinners. Understand it. If you're not speaking the testimonies of the Lord, allowing His wonderful expressions to be made manifest through you, you're sitting in the seat of the scornful by default. It's life and death. It's truth. It's lie. It's light or darkness. It's God or demon spirits. And there is no neutral zone. There are no half measures. Somebody said, how about a human realm of choice? There is a human realm of choice invaded either by the spirit of the Lord or by the spirit of darkness, period. Every person in this place, you're creating the world you want to live in. What does that look like? You're creating it by the power and the will of God in the realms of choice. You're deciding, come on now, everything that God has ever said is what every man wants. No man wants anybody stealing from him. No man wants anybody cheating on him. No man wants anybody murdering. Nobody wants anybody running off with their spouse. On and on and on. But oh, but when you get off on the selfish realm, then all of a sudden you're willing to take it and do to others what you would never want them to do to you. Uh, Father is just and holy in his ways in the heart of every human being that exists. Everyone from the most evil men. The conscience of God is there for what it is discovered in the things that they want, that they want, the way they want people to treat them, the things they would like to have in their life. It's written the ways of God. It's just that the demonic stronghold results in them living out a lie that is everything opposite of that and the way they treat other people. God has liberated us from that darkness. Hallelujah. The light is shining. His word. His word. And I'm always amazed at it in contemplating these things. I'm always amazed that Peter could stand there and hear the audible voice of God the Father. Look and behold, Jesus transfigured, shining, his very clothes shining like the sun. See Moses and Elijah as they talk to Christ Jesus about his soon departure and sacrifice and offering at Calvary. And yet Peter say, 
we have a more certain word of prophecy. He said, I was there in the holy mountain when I heard the excellent, saw the excellent glory, heard the voice of Almighty say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, we have a more certain word of prophecy. Where until you do well, if you take heed as unto a light shining in a dark place. Ha, ah, this word of God, this life-giving, powerful word of the gospel, which we preach now by the Holy Ghost, which results in someone having the miracle of salvation if they will hear it and respond to it. It creates the greatest miracle of a new creation to where everything about our life becomes holy and acceptable unto God, and that's just the beginning of the glory of it. Just the beginning of the glory of it. Just the beginning, the glory of it. We just walk in and took Kashmir as a nation. Just walked in and said, this is my nation. Amen. And watch the powers of God. Just watch the power of God overthrow the powers of darkness. It just happened. I'm not talking about what happened last year. I'm talking about what happened just recently. Walked into Cuba and said, I must have a meeting with Raul Castro and with Fidel. God has sent me to get Fidel into the kingdom of God. People were blown away. I was with the only person in government that has access to government that can make that happen. It's in the works right now. Uh, that I, I am, I, everything about me in my life is being run down and searched out and their due diligence, governmental due diligence is being done on me so I can walk into the room with Fidel Castro and bring him into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And take the nation of Cuba. It's time. It's time. Anybody that believes, we limit ourselves on, base, on, on the criteria that we have defined for what we believe is success, what we believe is the, the uh, opportunities and permission to move forward. God defines it entirely different. He defines it on the basis of who we believe, who's willing to obey, who's willing to go for me. You can't stand in his presence too long and not hear him say, who's going to go for us? Huh? Yeah, I tell you, listen to me. You can't stand in his presence too long. Oh, it's amazing. And yeah, even if you're a prophet like Isaiah, a glorious Holy Ghost-filled prophet, who King Manasseh saw it in half, You can't stand in his presence too long and not be overwhelmed with the glory and feel so undone, but he's always got a cure for the undoneness. Oh, praise God. You have an encounter with God, he's got a cure for the undoneness. As soon as you feel undone, he's got a cure. Hallelujah. Cold from off the altar, held by a seraphim, is good enough to take away your sin and purge your iniquity. Oh, what will the blood of Jesus Christ do for you and me? And you won't stand there too long beholding that glory, seeing his glory, Fill the temple. Hallelujah. His train fill the temple. All the majesty and all the splendor and all the power and all the might of who he is. You won't stand there too long. You'll be hearing him say, who will go for us? He just leaves it out as a general question waiting for somebody to respond. God doesn't make anyone waiting for someone to respond. I'll go. Hallelujah, says the prophet. That word cost him everything eventually. He's one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. God unveiled to him glory in Isaiah 66. Glory through the passages, especially beginning in chapter 40 to Isaiah chapter 66, 42 to 66, powerful reading, powerful revelation, powerful word of God. Change your life if you begin to agree with it. But it cost him his life in the end. But it was all, that's okay. His transition was glorious. Hallelujah. Come on, people. You're living a whole lot longer than what you planned. Listen, get in this realm of the kingdom of God. This vehicle is going to a good destination. I can see on the horizon. I tell you, we headed to a good place. 10,000 years from now, everybody in this place who's willing to walk with God and willing to be faithful in the end. Ah, we'll camp, we'll sit around, we'll talk about these things. You know, you're going to be gathered unto your people and unto your kindred. And unto everyone that you know, and your family members and of your friends that have gone on before you into the kingdom of God. That's the way it works. You're gathered unto your fathers, to your kindred. Ask God, he tells it over and again. All here, these things are revealed in the word. Huh? I tell you right now, I'm gonna miss out on hell. 
I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to spend one second there. <laughs> Hallelujah. No. No. I'm not spending one second there. In the first second, you'll dislocate your jaw in screams of terror and pain. Within the first 10 seconds, you will be driven completely insane by the screams of others. And that's just the beginning of your eternity in a place called hell. And a loving God is the one who created it because he hates sin more than you can imagine. He hates sin more than you could hate such a thought of torture and torment. And he wants to give you such wisdom that you would hate darkness and death and destruction like he hates it. And he gives everybody, he's not willing that anyone would perish. Not anyone. God made hell for the devil and his angels who defied him and rebelled against him and wanted nothing to do with him. But I'm going to tell you right now, Father has given people a choice and my, he's gone way beyond the call. Way beyond the call of duty, if you would. He jeopardized the universe. He jeopardized all creation to redeem you and me. He did. He sent his only begotten son who was tested in every way that you and I are tested. God manifested in the flesh who could not be tempted, who subjected himself to temptation, to be tempted in every way that we were tempted. And it was not some kind of a dry run. It wasn't some kind of a dry run. God rest everything to redeem you and me. He has made a complete salvation. He's made a complete work of it. He's looking for some people who would be willing to lay hold on this eternal life, on this life of God, on this life of the Spirit, that the Word of God instructs us in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have no right to live out your own life. You have no right to decide how you're going to act and behave yourself. Hallelujah. As my mama said, get a smile on your face or you're going to spank it on your bottom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what happens when you're raised in a preacher's home. And you're on your way to church. You're not going to embarrass me. Get a smile on your face or a spanking on your bottom. Do you choose. <laughs> Hallelujah. It teaches us how to start living in a discipline of giving ourselves over to happy. I'm telling you right now, you give yourself over to love, you're going to get filled with love. You give yourself over to joy, you're going to get filled with joy. I'm telling you, you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap everlasting life. The God kind of life, the Spirit kind of life. You sow to the flesh, I'm telling you, I would not want to be you. You're going to reap destruction. God will not be mocked. You're not mocking God. You're not telling him that you know better than he does. And what's fair and what's not fair is because you've been so conflicted with humanism. And you know nothing about divine truth and judgment and reality. Come on now. Get the whole picture before you're so hasty to judgment. Get all the, not all the facts, all the truth. Yeah. Truth's much higher than facts. Amen, right? You know that, right? You know that, right? Yeah. Your bank account may say that you have nothing in it. Fact. Truth says God will supply all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. <laughs> then you get to decide, well, am I going to believe fact? <laughs> or am I going to believe truth? Uh, and circumstance unfolds itself to you like that all day tomorrow. And up to this time and point, you have been dictated to right, left, and center by whatever master circumstance said. And you've been dictated to right and left why whatever dictator mammoth, mammon said. It's about time that you say no more. I'm serving another God from here on in. Hallelujah. I'm serving, I'm serving the living God, the true God. Hallelujah. The maker of heaven and earth. Praise God, the one who redeemed me with his blood. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm about ready to start now the sermon that I was going to preach. <laughs> because it's about time that God's church begin to, begin, begin to move and flow in the realms of the Spirit. Yes. You give yourself all day to being filled with the Spirit. Oh my. Listen, all day to being filled with the Spirit. God has purposed that His glory and His presence and the excitement of His ecstasy and, and, and person be expressed through us as though it were rivers of unlimited expression and power busting out of you and me. Ah, and Bubba says the way it's going to work is you've got to be continually filled with the Spirit. And somebody said, are you sure it's continually filled? Absolutely. It's, I'm sure it's continually filled. Absolutely. It's continually filled. Why? Because be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I see the direct result of something that's supposed to be going on all the time. 
The director of solo being filled with the Spirit is going to be what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What's that going to re equate into? The word of Christ dwelling in me richly so that I'm going to be teaching and admonishing. I'm, in, I'm going to have this word upon my lips. I'm going to have this praise in my heart. If I see somebody entangled with sin, bound up by the powers of darkness, I'm not going to act like I didn't notice. I'm going to cast the devil out of them. I'm going to lay hands on the sick, both those who are found and those who are lost, with a special emphasis on those who are lost. Tommy Hicks was a hick from the sticks Tommy Hicks how many of you know who Tommy Hicks is he's one of the champions of the kingdom of God in the 40s and 50s he's a hick I know one of the preachers that burned his tent down in Lakeview Oregon when he came to Oregon because he was a Baptist preacher and this Pentecostal guy has come with this tent we're gonna burn it down before it does any damage ha! Tommy Hicks, who was a hick from the sticks, a country boy, goes to Argentina. Ask God, let me pray for the president of the nation. Give me an opportunity to meet the president of the nation. One little nobody, little old skinny, puny, nobody man. Who if you go to, he went into the people's town, they burned his tent down. That's how much power it looks like he's got. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Believes God. Is willing to believe God. Can't get three or four people together for a meeting in the United States, but is willing to believe God to shake a nation. Goes prays for a president, and presidents get healed. Pre come on. Yeah. Argentina is smashed with the power of God. A nation changed. Because somebody's going to let the word of Christ dwell in them richly. Come on. Because somebody's going to believe the big things that God causes us to believe when we begin to listen to Him and cooperate with Him and hear Him tell us nothing will be impossible for them to believe. Anyone who believes these works which I've done shall they do also in greater works. Every time the Apostle Paul talks about the Holy Ghost and being born of the Spirit and being a Son of God, he says you are heir of God. Romans chapter 8, 14 through 17. Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. On and on it goes. We, without excuse, people, we're sitting around tending our own puny little business. Huh? When God's called us to His majesty and His glory. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost has trained, come to train us to be kings. Huh? Come, come on, pate ya. Kings. And we can say princesses. Princes and princesses. Kings and mighty men in His kingdom. Come on. And what do we want to do? Huh, what do we want to do? Get a job and make 75000 a year? Tag me with a fork sideways. I mean, give me a break. Huh, that's what the Valley Girls say, right? Come on. Are you listening to me? Come on now. Where's your heart? Where's your passion? What do you believe? When it's all said and done, we're looking at Joshua sitting in a nation who doesn't want, who's bent on sin. That as soon as the generation that came out of the mighty exploits of God are gone, they're in the worship of demons and polluting themselves in the grove with all kinds of immorality, worshiping Estar as Astart and Asherah. That's what's happening. In less than a generation. Father has redeemed a people who's zealous of good works. Yeah. He's purified in himself a people zealous of good works. The works that Christ Jesus did in greater works, anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. It's time now for the flow of heaven to begin to be seen in the church. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. I can tell you how many hours you pray in the Holy Ghost every day. I can tell you. I can tell. How many hours you don't play, pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I can tell how often you're being continually filled in the, with the Spirit. Because I'm telling you, I know what it results in to be continually yielded to the Holy Ghost, continually filled with the Spirit. As many as are led by the Holy Ghost, under the control of the Holy Ghost, under the mastery of the Holy Ghost, these are the sons of God. And if you're not, you're not. 
Or as the country person said, if you're not, you ain't. <laughs> you listening to me. We're the cure. We're the light. We're the balm in Gilead. We're the manifest Jesus in the earth. The church is not even defined as a body without... The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not defined as the body of Christ Jesus in the New Testament outside of the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. True. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 sets it all up. I'm not going to talk about it right now because I know it's, I'm, I'm already late. And some of you have got to get up and go to work in the morning and I know how prioritized that is in your life. And I'm here to break that thing down and keep you a little bit later. Huh? Somebody said, I got to get my sleep. Well, what has it done for you up to this point? You want change? You got to start doing everything different. Huh? If you haven't been getting what you wanted with all that sleep, now it's time to go without sleep and see what happens. Amen. Change everything. Rearrange everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clean the house from stem to stern. Get all the leaven out. Huh? Somebody says, what's wrong with me? I tell you, get rid of the leaven. You'll have yourself some heaven. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? The choices that you make. Somebody said, well, you just don't understand my unique circumstances. Yeah, hold up just a second. Yeah, I do. I understand unique, unique circumstances. You've been washed in the blood, been made a new creation, been made the temple of the living God, partakers of the divine nature. God the Holy Ghost moved in. Christ Jesus has been formed in you. God the Father came and has his dwelling in you. And then you was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I understand your unique situation. And I didn't give the full rundown of the program. Hallelujah. I didn't give you everything that God said about you. It's time you allow God to define you and his word is the dictionary. Hello. It's about time you stop believing what everybody else says you are and what you think you are and start believing what God said about you and start doing what God said you're supposed to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, you'll stand up and start saying, Father, I want to meet the president of Argentina. Because he's saying, there's nothing's new. Nothing's gone away. The avail that which was available to po the Apostle Paul is available to you right now. Available to me. We're getting, we're, getting ready, we're getting ready to get on an airplane to go to Iowa. This will be our first time in Iowa this week. We'll be ministering in four different places in Iowa. The Iowans are pumped up. The Iowans believe that revival is coming to Iowa. Hallelujah. Papa will meet you at the place of your faith. He'll meet you at the place and point of your expectation. Come on, church. Some of you just got back from Camp Shake Nations. How many of you just got back from Camp Shake Nations? Come on, people. Huh? Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? Do you have a vision of Shake Nations? I mean, that's really what that's all about. It's to, just to seed you with the reality that God's given you the power and the ability to live great in the kingdom, to be so occupied with things in the kingdom, you don't have time to be occupied with everything else that people are chasing after and getting nowhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just wait to see what Camp Shake Nations is going to be look like five years from now. I got some people over there that are committed to seeing the power of God. I mean, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think uh, uh, Daniel was telling me about how that a number of different folks, terrorists were there, ISIS guys were there. <laughs> And when you were captured, if you did not preach an anointed Holy Ghost sermon that touched, that, where they could feel the anointing, you were put in prison and tortured. But if you preached a Holy Ghost anointed message where they could feel the anointing and these people know what the anointing is like, then you got set free to go on and take the nation. Come on, I'm telling you. Praise God. Praise God, hallelujah, for these kinds of things that see people with the reality of what God's given us the privilege to do so that Satan doesn't occupy you with 75,000 a year or a quarter of a million a year. And you got to work yourself to death to earn it. And Father has given us a gifting to go and walk in His majesty and His splendor and reign in this world with him, to go everywhere, to subdue nations, to make disciples out of nations. Hallelujah, to have the, the uttermost parts for, of the earth for our possession and the lost for our here. Stand with me. Yes. Come on, people. Yes. Listen, listen, listen. 
Father wants to start moving. Listen, listen to me. God's going to do something for you. Go, 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 go on. After listen, but listen to me. Father wants his anointing, his manifest presence, and his glory, the flow of the Holy Ghost in his house. You know, I'm going to go and do... Debbie's asked me, Debbie Rester and her husband have asked me to come and be the speaker at their conference this year. And I'm going to go, I, I, just, just, I just felt the Lord was telling me this morning, just go get those Holy Ghost people flowing in the Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> Father wants the manifestation of His Spirit in His house. Yeah. Father wants tongues and interpretation in His house. Yeah. Father wants the flow of heaven in his house. He doesn't want, we, we got all hyped up on having some kind of music thing going on. Some big mu music presentation, smoke and mirrors and lights and whatever else. And voices. And, well, everybody's all trembly trying to make it better. Give me a break. I want flow of Holy Ghost. I want, I want the manifestation of the Spirit that is given to every man. I want word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit, working of miracles, gifts of healing, faith, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, spirit of wisdom, revelation, caught away, captivated. Hallelujah. And the way that's going to happen, people, is you're going to begin to let the spirit of the living God flow through you. You're going to be given to give yourself to the flow, to being filled, to drinking, to drinking of the water. Anytime, anywhere, any place, all you have to do is say to the rock, Christ Jesus, give me the drink. Speak to the rock. God will give you divine wisdom and insight so you can speak to a rock and water comes out. Ah! Father will give you spirit knowledge so you can speak to an axe head and it will float. Papa give you spirit knowledge so that you can say to the sun and moon, do not move. God will give you spirit knowledge that you can say to a little bit of wheat, a little bit of flour, and a little bit of oil, do not diminish. Spirit knowledge to say to a few loaves and a few fishes, you're going to feed 5,000. Not counting women and children. Father will give you spirit knowledge and show you the way in the midst of the water to walk where there's dry land, to show you how that a stormy sea can be like a solid pavement. Oh. Father will give you insight and understanding where you know that the dead will rise again before you ever speak. You'll see the life-giving power right there before your eyes and be able to witness the anointing and what Father is doing so you'll be, because you give yourself to flow in the Spirit, you'll be able to begin to see. I tell you, if you'll get, listen to me, if you'll get detached detached. If you weren't here, listen, the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me of this. If you were not here for this Friday night School of the Spirit, you need to watch School of the Spirit on the YouTube. Because it's really about how to get detached from human sympathy, human concern, human knowledge, so you can begin to function in the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Chrissy, come here. Come sit up here. Because what Papa's going to do, what Father is going to do is this. Come stand up here on the platform. I believe one of the greatest hindrances to the flow of the anointing is human consciousness, self consciousness. God fills you with God consciousness and you've, everybody disappears in the room. I really like, there's this, there's this movie about the greatest game about golf, greatest game ever played. And when the pro gets up to hit the golf ball, he's looking out on the field and it's jam packed with people. They're all around, huge crowds. And as he gets ready to get up there, they all disappear. And all he can see is the flag. That's exactly the way I feel in the anointing. That's exactly the way I feel when the power of God begins to work through my life for signs and wonders and miracles. Everything and everybody and every hindrance and every concern and every earthly interest totally disappears. God consciousness. Oh, it's such a boldness. You're suddenly alone with God in a secret place and there can be tens of thousands of people around. That's where it happens. I'm going to tell you, when you begin to learn this, go, if you weren't, once again, if you weren't here, maybe even you were, go back and listen to it. 
because it will make the difference of whether or not you can stand on a platform between before thousands and tens of thousands of people and more and see signs and wonders and miracles because you're caught away in a realm of divine glory and you recognize you're not even aware of yourself and therefore there's no limitation it's just a God consciousness it's God in me it's the power of the living God it's what God has commissioned us to do Christ Jesus tabernacling in me if you will wake up in the morning and decide that you're going to live the word Christ Jesus God has called you to live his life and to live his ministry if you wake up in the morning and you say I am going to be and live the word I'm going to be an instrument in the master's hand God's not looking for golden vessels or silver vessels. He's looking for empty vessels. And I'm telling you right now, He's not excluded any single person. And these are the days of the great majesty and signs and wonders and miracles of the Almighty. He's looking for anybody who's willing. Okay. With total abandonment, I surrender everything to you to live your life. Oh God, I'm done with me. I'm done with my stuff. I'm done with all of my attitudes. I'm done with all of my issues. I'm done with my drama. I'm done with all of my cares. I'm done with all of my associations. I'm over. I'm yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bravo, Sitayat. Papa's doing it right in. Papa's doing it for you right now. He's doing it for you right now. He's doing it for you. Those songs that you're writing, I'm telling you right now, they're just going to be between you and the Lord and it's, going to get, and it's not going to be subject to others' approval. Hallelujah. People, Father, His purpose that we be not anything other than God-made men and women. I'm not a self-made man. I'm a God-made man. And everything that we believe that we can ascribe to ourselves, that we have a boast in ourselves, is a hindrance to all that which God would do through the divine because we're going to place that responsibility and that weight upon ourselves to produce. I'm free. I'm free. I can get, I don't care. I can walk into a room with three people and be caught away. I could walk into a room with 3,000 people and just be caught away, just whistle all the way up to the platform. Hallelujah, because I'm caught away. Not because I'm self-confident, I'm caught away. Why? Because I've given myself over to live the Word. I've given myself over to be filled with the Spirit. I've given myself over to let the Word of God dwell in me richly, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to have admonitions and teaching coming out of me flowing like rivers. I'm going to have the pray high praises of God in my mouth and a sharp two-edged two sword in my hand. I'm going to have signs and wonders and miracles flowing through my life because I'm going to give myself to be continually filled with the Spirit. I'm going to give myself to a communion and a fellowship of drinking His blood and eating His body. I'm living over in heaven. I'm not having any hell. I'm not giving myself to strife. I'm not giving myself to argument and complaint. I'm not giving myself to offense. I'm not giving myself to all those things that belong to a realm of darkness. I'm giving myself to this place called love and grace and glory. God's calling you. Father's calling you. Papa's calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody just come. Come stand up here. I have asked. Haloporina Setali Nikia. There are many people in this place here tonight. You've got a variety of different needs. Huh? You've got a variety of different requests and petitions before the Lord. There are things that are happening in this place. I know that Jeremy is working on a diplomatic, a diplomat program and diplomat and ambassador to nations program for the government. He'd paid a good salary. 
diplomat by day, Holy Ghost fiery preacher by night. Huh? And nations that are unreached nations. Come on now. No small thinking here. Come on, Papa's empowered somebody. Somebody's going to have to do it. Father's empowered us to take the nations. I see, I see a very small amount of people going to the unreached people groups. Where three billion people have never heard the, the name of Jesus. A lot of folks are playing it safe and going where in the circles of where everybody's heard and where there's freedom to operate. Come on, no. Father's got bigger things for us. Tonight, I want you to trade in your problems to God for God's answers. I want you to pray, trade in your frustrations for divine excitement. Hallelujah. I want you to turn in your sorrow for joy. Hallelujah. I want you to turn in your ashes for beauty. Hallelujah. I want you to turn in the human realm for the heavenly realm. Father, bari busaya baba ni brokaya masipaka. Wants to give these things to you. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The fire of the Holy Spirit is here. Ah, the great exploits of God and the working of the power of God is here. I promise you, even there where you're listening right now, on the web, right there where you're listening on the web, right there, as you're watching me on the YouTube. Hallelujah. The hand of God is reaching out to you. The call of God is coming to you. All you have to do is respond. You say, who me? How can I get past my troubles? How can I get past my issues? How can I get past my problems? Simply obey God. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift up your voice to heaven and begin to declare to God those things that you purpose to do in Him. Just begin to lift up your voice and begin to worship Father. Begin to let that robo si katana go forth out of your heart. I'll tell you in Jesus' name. Everything changes tonight. God strengthens you. God equips you. God empowers you in Jesus. The only thing that changes nations is the flow of the Holy Ghost. on high <laughs> the will springs of life hallelujah hallelujah 